Hello, my name is Dietrich Rogge. I'm a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer working with the Jamaican Caves Organization to produce this video which you're seeing today. I'm here with Richard Magoo of the National Water Commission to provide some local expertise on this subject of importance. Uh, the purpose of this production is to educate people on the importance of caves and sinkholes and the groundwater resources of Jamaica, which are often intimately linked. We will first watch a, a brief little informational video that, that shows um, some caves and some groundwater sources in Jamaica and the link and potential concerns between them. Uh, my name is Stefan Stewart. This is Ivor Connolly, Dietrich Rogge here. We're with uh, a group called the Jamaican Caves Organization, a non-profit non group that's uh, uh, studying and uh, exploring and uh, doing uh, trying to learn all we can about the caves in Jamaica. Uh, part of what we're trying to do is uh, make people realize the importance of keeping these caves clean, not using them as dumps, trying to uh, avoid having garbage washed into them. And uh, so the people who are uh, drawing their water downstream can stay healthy and we keep the water good and clean. Through the thousands of years, this cave has formed from taking water and has carved its way through, and it still continues to take water. But unfortunately, uh, because it's difficult for people here to get rid of their garbage, because in most cases there isn't proper garbage collection, they have to find some place to put it, and this is one of the places where they have found to put their garbage. But unfortunately, because this does take water, and is an active stream passage cave at some times of the year. We don't know where it comes out at the other end, but it does come out at the other end somewhere as a spring. And so you wind up with people at the downstream end thinking that they're drinking clean spring water, and it could be a nice little spring, maybe dammed up a little bit with pipes, and people go and fill their water bottles. And the water that they are drinking has washed through uh, quite a collection of garbage down in here. I'm not sure what's down in here now, but when we were in here a year ago, it included such things as dirty diapers. Probably car parts and stuff. Who knows if you get car batteries being tossed in there. You've got lead and stuff. So uh, this is an unfortunate good example of, uh, of how you get pollution happening in the water supply here that could be avoided. And it's not the fault of the people themselves who live here because they don't really have anywhere to put their garbage, but, you know, uh, this is not the best place to put it. And that's definitely the case. just hard rocky passages, actual tunnels. So rather than like springs coming out from being filtered from a material, but just an underground river that flows straight through and the water can move through very, very quickly, you know. Uh, flows in one spot and uh, one of the caves, um, it's dammed up a little bit and pipes come out and people regularly go and get their water there. But up at the top end, there's garbage and stuff being washed in. I mean, we had a couple of the local uh, Jamaican people come through with us one time. Uh, well, we finally get out to the other end, because they've been curious to go in there for a while. Finally get to the other end, and we crawl out, and they say, Whoa, man, me never draw water from here again, man. They were quite familiar with the upstream end of it mm -hmm. and the downstream end, but they didn't realize that they were connected at all.
Mr. Megu, what are some of your thoughts on the video that we've just seen? Well, I would like to start by just stating some facts. Um, it's a worldwide phenomenon that most of the water that we utilize for domestic purposes and industrial purposes, we obtain that from groundwater. In fact, in Jamaica, the same thing obtains, where 84% of the water that we utilize in this country comes from underground water sources. And by underground water sources, I mean wells and springs, because most times when people think of underground water supply, they think of wells. However, springs are in fact uh, um, born out of water that have traveled underneath the surface for a particular period of time. And when there is uh, enough of a crack for that water to come up, it comes up as a spring. So spring and uh, wells are in fact underground water sources. Now, in terms of what we saw in the video, it, it, it's, 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 it's a classical example of, of, of pollution that people never even think about. The fact that uh, what happens upstream um, affects downstream is not, is not uh, imprinted on, on, on most people's mind because they think that what you dash with, it basically wash with. It doesn't impact you. Right? And the fact that we saw in the video that diapers were being thrown in that cave and people downstream are drinking from a, a water source that is probably derived from that cave um, speaks to the fact that people who think that they are drinking natural, clean water are actually drinking somebody else's waste. There's bacterial contamination, there's contamination from the urine, and there's contamination from the batteries, heavy metal con contamination. There's contamination from the chairs that are thrown there. Um, and with the advent of, 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 of acid rain, uh, um, this tendency for heavy metals to dissolve in water is more so now of a problem than, than before. So we're actually drinking a lot of garbage when we think we're drinking clean water if something like that is happening to our drinking water supply.